And welcome back to our special coverage of the Republican National Convention. I'm John Bachman. Thanks for joining us. Several of Donald Trump's former rivals will take the stage tonight, including Ted Cruz, who will be appearing here shortly. He's not expected to endorse Donald Trump. Instead, he will use the event to encourage the party to unite and look towards a conservative future. But everyone was looking towards the sky during a Cruz rally had earlier today. Donald Trump's jet flew over the crowd. At the same time, Cruz told his supporters that the party has their nominee. Take a look. Orchestrated. It didn't appear that it was actually orchestrated, but you did hear the boos, though, from the crew supporters. Plenty of turmoil. Meanwhile, over at Fox News, over negotiations involving CEO Roger Ailes departing from the company he helped create due to those sexual harassment claims made against him. Miranda Khan has more. Roger Ailes. Roger Ailes. Roger Ailes. Another blockbuster report from New York Magazine's Gabe Sherman, exposing inner turmoil at Fox News. The network's biggest star, Megyn Kelly, has now accused him battle chairman Roger Ailes of sexual harassment. He just has this sort of x-ray vision into your soul, and he has a way of knowing what you need. New York Magazine also broke the story that Ailes would be fired soon, 20 years after founding Fox News under Rupert Murdoch. The decision to remove him follows an internal investigation and former Fox anchor Gretchen Carlson's own sexual harassment lawsuit. We need to stand together with all of the victims and make sure that they are not silenced. Carlson told the New York Times everyone knew how powerful Roger Ailes was. I certainly felt intimidated by that. Several prominent Fox personalities have defended Ailes. I've never seen anything personally inappropriate at all. Not for nothing, Jeb, but you're not blonde. But now come these new reports backing up Carlson involving the network's biggest star, Megyn Kelly. According to Sherman, Ailes made unwanted sexual advances toward her about 10 years ago. Kelly, according to the sources, has described her harassment in detail. If confirmed, the reports would show a much different side of Kelly's relationship with the man she called her mentor just a few months ago. I really care about Fox and I really care about Roger. Well, Megan Kelly is in the midst of contract renegotiations, but there is some speculation that Roger Ailes, if he does leave Fox News, he may take the top talent with him, including Bill O'Reilly and Greta Van Susteren. Our special coverage of the Republican National Convention continues now. JD, back to you. Thanks very much, John. Remember that you can get in on the conversation. Give me a call at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. We made mention of the fact that House Speaker Paul Ryan delivered an address at the convention last night. Of course, technically he is the presiding officer at this convention as the House Speaker. And it's very interesting how Speaker Ryan deliberately was looking ahead. Listen to this. The next time that there's a State of the Union address, I don't know where Joe Biden or Barack Obama are going to be, but you'll find me right there on the rostrum with Vice President Mike Pence and President Donald Trump. Uh, the vision that Speaker Ryan put forth last night, well, there is one man who hopes to change it in one significant way. Challenging Ryan in Wisconsin 1 is Paul Nealon, who rejoins us via Skype. He has been working it hard. Paul, we thank you for your time. Brother Nealon, welcome back to Newsmax TV. Great to see you again, J.D. Thanks, ne sir. Well, it's good to have you, and I got to tell you, we've been checking the poll numbers, and Paul Ryan has seen uh, his numbers plummet precipitously. Absolutely. Uh, as you recall, uh, in April, I was at 0%, Paul Ryan was at 80 and in June, I was at 7%, and he was somewhere in the 70s. And just last week, we were at 32% to his 43%, with 25% undecided. And so that's a pretty precipitous drop from 80s to 43. So we are really encouraged. We are working hard and pounding doors. And, of course, uh, Ryan, with uh, that big chunk of change in his uh, campaign war chest, been putting out mailers actually talking about border security. When you heard about that and saw him put out those campaign mailers, what was your reaction? Just absolutely dishonest. Just, the guy's got $10 million to spend, and honestly, 
That's blood money as far as I'm concerned. That money was raised by the same people who want open borders. Roy Beck from uh, Numbers USA has said Paul Ryan alone is the re has caused 10 million illegal aliens to come into this country. And those same people that want open borders are putting money in Paul Ryan's campaign coffers. Meanwhile, we've got Americans that are being shot and killed or even other more terrible things I won't bring up right now, uh, as a result of Paul Ryan's open border policy. He is absolutely, to the core of his being, every fiber, he is an open borders guy. And that $10 million, in fact, I just called on him today. I gave a press conference telling him to take down a TV ad that he put up saying that he's making us safer, protecting us from Islamic terrorists. And nothing could be further from the truth. Paul Ryan funded the 300,000 refugees that <coughs> Obama wants. And it, it, nobody believes it. Nobody believes what he's doing. I've got people calling me in the district saying, I just saw the worst ad ever from Paul Ryan. We all know he's full of it. Well, Brother yeah. Nalen, what can happen is that can create a backlash. Now, while you were speaking, we had a screen grab of an article that appeared at Breitbart.com, and it's very interesting. We're seeing it again right here. Ryan's got a $10 million war chest, yet Governor Scott Walker sent out a fundraising letter saying that uh, you are providing, quote, the toughest fight yet to Paul Ryan, when you heard that Governor Walker was in on this thing, what, what was your reaction to that? Well, you know, I've been shut out, J.D., as you know. I've been shut out of meetings with the party. This is a primary. The party's supposed to be neutral in a primary situation. But we've seen Facebook posts where the party is out pounding signs on behalf of Paul Ryan. Meanwhile, I'm personally pounding signs. I've got, I've got blisters on my blood blisters. I'm pounding doors. I've got volunteers pounding signs and pounding doors, people on the phone. Governor Walker, for him to throw in with Paul Ryan, this open borders guy, we've got, we, had to, we had to earmark $5 million in the state because of TV, a TV outbreak in Sheboygan. You know, Paul Ryan's federal, federal government, our federal government, led by Speaker Ryan, has funded refugees from, Bur from Burma and uh, Hmong, refugees who have high levels of latent TB. Well, the federal government pays to get them here, but then who pays for their treatment? Wisconsinites. Who else pays? People in Vermont. People, wherever they're relocated, the state taxpayer pays for their health care. Ultimately, so it is taxpayers who have to take care of all these folks. I tell you what, let's go to a call from yeah. Dublin, Georgia. Uh, Richard is on the line. Richard, welcome to Newsmax TV. Hey, J.D. Hey. Hey, Peter, I just want to say one thing to the, uh, to the Republicans about these low-life Democrats, about Obama, how they're just doing everything they I got to tell you, Richard, you sound like a guy, if you were living up in uh, Janesville, Wisconsin, instead of Dublin, Georgia, you sound like a guy who would be there uh, on behalf of Paul Nealon instead of Paul Ryan. And let me ask you about that, Brother Nealon, this Washington versus the rest of us notion, the fact that Paul Ryan speaks last night glowingly of Donald Trump, yet two days earlier said he wasn't, quote, his kind of conservative. How much is that going to redound to your benefit as Ryan's challenger there in Wisconsin 1? Well, Paul Ryan likes to say that people in southeast Wisconsin know him, and they are starting to know him. They're starting to know that he says one thing here in the district, and he goes to D.C. and votes for something else. Paul Ryan said that uh, Mr. Trump was not his kind of conservative. Well, I'll tell you what. Mr. Pence voted against the bailouts that Mr. Ryan voted for. And if you recall, he said, Mr. Speaker, or uh, Paul Ryan at the time said, uh, Ms. Pelosi, I'm, this, this, bill, this bill goes against my principles, and I'm going to vote for this bill to save my principles. Paul Ryan doesn't have any principles. The only principles Paul Ryan has are the ones inside the D.C. Beltway 
we apparently don't pay well enough here in Wisconsin's first district to get Speaker Ryan's vote to vote on behalf of us here in his district. Let me ask they you this, Brother better. Nealon. Let me ask you this. People around the country are watching you, yeah. interested in your campaign, only got about uh, 20 seconds. Where do they go to find out more about you and your campaign? Go to electnealon.com. That's elect, N E H L E N, dot com. All right. Paul Nealon, tonight from the 1st District of Wisconsin. Of course, Speaker Ryan, very powerful in Washington, D.C., but in this year of the outsider, will we see a surprise in Wisconsin's 1st District? Paul Nealon, we thank you for your time. We're coming back with more, including more of your phone calls at 1-877-NEWSMAX. Join us here as we continue our coverage.